everyone, welcome back to the Homestead Kitchen. Everyone has been asking me when I am going to make some new sourdough starter. If you're new to the channel, I had a homemade sourdough starter going before we started our YouTube channel. It lasted about a good 15 months and then I put it in the cupboard one day and I forgot it was there. And some mold grew on it and it was just pretty gross and I tossed it out. So today I'm making a new batch of sourdough starter and I thought I would take you along for the ride. So one of the things I did not love about my last sourdough starter is I was mixing it in a quart jar. And we ended up using so much that I always had two quart jars full. So I found a crock that I love that is two quart size. Ideally, I kind of wanted it a little bit bigger so that we could just make sourdough items all the time. I think this is going to work out really well. I did get two of them so I can switch them out or maybe have two going again. But I'm really excited about this because when I was stirring in the small quart jar, I would find that things would get stuck more on the sides and I think this will just be easier to keep clean, keep the sourdough a little less messy. I also picked up a cotton cover for over my crock. Previously, I had been using coffee filters, paper towels, dishcloths, and I just felt like it looked messy sitting on my counter. So I wanted something that looked nice, neat, and clean sitting out. And I think this is going to be the perfect option. It said this was breathable and that's what I was going for. So I'm hoping it's going to work. And if you're seeing this video, that means it did. So you certainly can use a starter. You can purchase a starter or get it from someone else to start your sourdough. But there's some things I just enjoy doing myself. And I really love feeling like this is something I can do. So the only ingredients in my sourdough starter are going to be some flour and some water. Super easy. I will leave links below to where I got the crock and this cover for it. actually came in a three set, the covers did. So I've been using them for leftovers, which I find is kind of nice too. Um, so I'm not using so many disposable items. The flour I'm using is an organic all-purpose flour. I looked at the ingredients and it said it's organic wheat flour and it's not bleached. I was just using a simple bleached all-purpose flour for my last starter and it worked really well and it was really simple and frankly that's the flour that's most readily available where I am. So I did have to get this from Target and make a special trip to get it, but going to Target really isn't that much of a chore either. Kind of enjoyable one I guess. So it is going to take me quite a few days to get this starter really going, but today it's super simple. I'm adding about a half cup of flour. And I measured out about a half cup of warm water. It's really important that you aren't using chlorinated water. We have well water, so I just used our warm tap water. If your water's chlorinated, make sure you're using unchlorinated water. I measured out about a half cup in my fancy new measuring cup, like that. I got it at a flea market when I was with my mom and my um, sister, and the writing's still on. I have a newer one, and that writing wore right off. So I'm gonna add about half of this, so about a quarter cup of the warm water. And then I'm just mixing it up. I'm using a spatula. I'll usually use this or a wooden spoon. You just wanna make sure that you're not using anything metal in case you get those flavors in your sourdough. As you can see, it's kind of dry, so I'm going to add a little bit more water. A little bit more. I think I'm going to actually add that whole half cup. That looks a lot better. I kind of want it like a thick... batter. I don't really want a dough. I want just kind of a thicker batter. I'm just making sure I mix in that flour really well because you don't want clumps of flour when you have your bread. The other day we were 
digging in the depths of our freezer and we found yet again another loaf of sourdough bread so we just finished that off yesterday and it was kind of a good reminder that we really like sourdough bread this flour did seem a little bit lumpier than the other one but you can see it's kind of I'll grab my spatula you can see it's kind of like a thick batter no longer dough but it's not too runny and I'm gonna worry about this a lot less I'm gonna worry about this a lot less as I get this out of going but for now I just want to get it going all right so that's it for day one I'm gonna cover it up and set it aside and I'm gonna come back to it about the same time tomorrow but this is it half a cup of flour half a cup of warm water stir it up set it aside all right day two here so we're gonna open up our starter and in the crock, I was noticing it's a little harder to tell if I've got little bubbles because normally I'd be able to see them along the side. But if you look, there's not a whole lot going on there. So I'm gonna feed it again and not get too worried just yet. Maybe my cover's not gonna work as great as I thought it would. So I'm gonna add about half a cup of flour and I've got half a cup of warm water, but I'm not gonna add all of it because I noticed it was a little runnier than I'd like. So maybe if I get it a little bit thicker this time, that should be able to get it going. About a quarter cup and stir it in. I'm gonna add a little bit more of the water. All right, so I've got this kind of nice thick batter or runny dough. Now that I've got it all mixed up, that's it for day two. I'm gonna cover it back up, set it aside again for 24 hours. Hi everyone, so here we are on day three and I have to show you what the starter is doing. Whoop, sliding down there. Can you see that? So there are so many bubbles and stuff going on in here, but it did kind of form almost like a hard layer on top, which I didn't experience very often with my other starter. So I'm guessing that this cover lets a little bit more air through than what I was previously using, but I don't think that's a bad thing. So I'm gonna get it mixed up. Oh yeah, it's mixing up just fine. And then I'm going to feed it again. And you guessed it, half a cup of flour. And I've been adding about a full half cup of warm water, but I've been adding it about a quarter cup at a time just to be sure it's a good consistency. So that's it again for day three. I'm going to cover it up and set it aside. Right now my starter is going really well. I'm not too worried about it. I think it's going to do really well, but I'll add a few more days so you can kind of see what it's starting to look like and show you what I like to do with the discard because I'm not usually too confident in starting bread with a new starter and I want to give it time to grow before I'm actually making bread with it. So day four. I can finally smell that kind of sourdough smell. It's still a little bit more floury than it usually is, but again, half cup <laughs> and quarter to half cup water. It's a little runnier than I like, so I probably won't add the whole half cup this time. I've said that before. When making sourdough, the thing I remember is the flour feeds it and the water mixes it. So this time it's good and mixed up and I added under a quarter cup of warm water. At this point, if you're using a smaller container, you might need to take 
some of the excess off and I'll show you what I like to do with it at the end of the video. But because I'm using such a large container, this two quart crock, I'm not gonna need to worry too much about having um, an amount I need to discard. Look it up, set it aside, we'll be back at it again tomorrow. Hi everyone, day five here. Sourdough's looking good, lots of little bubbles, and it's starting to smell like sourdough. I can smell it when I open it up for sure. Um, so I'm gonna dump in another half a cup of flour in here, hopefully. And I've got half a cup of warm water. Again, I'm not adding it all, just seeing how much I'm gonna need first. And that's it. Done with day five, I'm gonna set it aside. I used about a quarter cup of warm water when all was said and done. Day six, half a cup of flour again. And some warm water. I've got half a cup, but again, I'm gonna add about half and go from there. So here we are, day seven, and this is the day when I feel like my sourdough starter is official. It looks like real starter. I've got lots of bubbles, and I'm adding the same amounts again, half a cup of flour, and half a cup or less of water. Boy, I filled up a full cup. Probably more like a quarter. So I'm going to mix this up and today I'm doing something that you might have had to do already. My starter's finally starting to amount to quite a bit. I'm using a two quart container so if you're using a one quart container it probably has already gotten really big and I'm going to need to do something with this discard. Now I will probably wait a little while before I actually use my starter to make sourdough bread. Just because I want to be really sure that I've got it going. But regardless of what I'm making with my starter, I almost always feed it around lunchtime. Right now it's the evening, as you can probably tell, and I want to get back, on the back in the habit of feeding it right after lunch. It seems to work best for me because if I feed it after lunch, it usually takes between like four and 12 hours when it's like good and bubbly then, and I wanna make dough with it. So then I'll put my sourdough bread mix up together right after the kids go to bed around seven o'clock. So then it's sat probably about a good seven hours. So I think the rule is about like four to 12 hours seems to be ideal. So whatever works for you, if you stay up much later than that, you can certainly do it later in the night and you could mix this up um, in the evening when you get home or vice versa, you could feed it in the morning and cook or throw your dough together, throw your dough together when you get home from work. So there's just a lot of options and I really just like the versatility of it. I am definitely a fan of leaving my sourdough on the counter. Part of why I wanted something that I didn't have to look into and something that I just liked the way it looked. That being said, there are times when it's just not reasonable to have your sourdough on the counter because in my mind, I should be feeding it at least once a day if it's on the counter. I have forgotten, it's been fine. Don't forget for over a week like I did because that's when I lost mine. I lost it to mold when I left it for over a week without feeding it. But if I put it in the fridge, it seems to do much better where I can feed it once every three, four, or five days and just not worry about it as much. So if I'm leaving, I'm headed out of town somewhere for a couple days, I'll put it in the fridge and then I just don't really need to worry about it until I get back. Where you put your sourdough definitely depends on how much you plan on using it. The amount of sourdough I have been using, which is this amount, is enough for me to make just sourdough bread, two very large loaves, about every four or so days. 
And it definitely depends on the temperature of my kitchen. If my kitchen is nice and warm, my sourdough does really, really well. And if it's cold in here, it doesn't. But when I don't want to make bread with my sourdough starter, or like this, I'm not quite ready and confident in it to use it for bread yet, I love to make crackers. They're just so simple and I'm not really, I'm not really one to follow recipes. As you can tell, I don't weigh out my flour and stuff for this. I do do that for my bread, but I don't weigh out my flour for feeding it. I just need something simple and quick and usually I won't even measure it out. I will just dump in about how much I want. But what I'm going to show you is how I make sourdough crackers. They are so easy. They are delicious. Everyone in our house loves them and we just, we can't keep them for very long because we eat them so fast. So for my sourdough crackers, I'm gonna take my discard, what I don't want of this, just so it doesn't overflow my crock, and I'm going to put it in a bowl. I'm not gonna do too much tonight because it is the evening and I don't want to stay up too late. What I love about sourdough crackers is they're so easy to put together, but they do take a while to bake. Does anyone else store their cast iron in the stove? Oven? It's an oven. I'm going to preheat my oven to 350 degrees. Let's get this mixed up. Anytime I'm doing anything with sourdough, I really like to work on my stovetop. I do have a nice cover that Matt made me for my stovetop because it will get nice and warm. And all that's going to do is just really get my sourdough going. So what I like about this recipe for the discard, the crackers, I can use it right after I've had my sourdough or I can wait a while and this works great then too. So I'm going to season my crackers however I like. I think salt is probably the most important ingredient you could put on them. So make sure you add some salt. And then I really like garlic and my family really enjoys the everything bagel seasoning from Aldi. There's a couple different varieties of this. I think you can even find one on Amazon. I can leave a link below. Um, but it's really good. It's kind of like a salty, garlicky, it's mostly salt, garlic, and onion in it. But I am going to add a little extra garlic powder because my family loves garlic. And this is one of those recipes where you can play around with it. Add as little or as much as you want and you'll find out more what you like. The only other ingredient in my crackers is oil. I'm using just some olive oil, but you can use whatever kind of oil you like. And I don't ever measure this, so I would say however much sourdough starter you use, about an eighth of the amount of oil. And then I'll get it mixed up really good and I'll show you kind of the consistency so you know what you're looking for. So here's kind of what the consistency looks like. It's kind of like a thin dough. Not really a whole lot different than the starter. Obviously a little more greasy. Um, but I'll show you what we're going to do with it next. I'm using just a cake pan. Uh, I don't know what to call this. More like a industrial size cookie sheet and a silipat just kind of a, a non-stick mat. You can certainly use parchment paper and I in fact find that is a little bit easier just because I can pull it up and clean it up really easily but I'm trying to get better about um, not being so wasteful so I'm using the silipat sheet. Since the sourdough mixture has oil in it I'm not really too worried about it sticking so I don't need to grease this at all. I'm just going to make a thin layer of this dough across the sheet. Now here's the trick. You would think that a nice really thick looking layer would work best, but it doesn't. You want a really, really thin layer where it's almost breaking as you make it. If it's breaking you want like one little swipe too far. but you want it very, very thin. Trust me, the thinner it is, the better they will taste. All right, so I've had the crackers in about five minutes. They aren't done yet, but I wanna show you what I'm gonna do now. I take the crackers out, and I like to use a pizza cutter. You could certainly use a knife, but this just is faster and more efficient, and I cut them into about the sizes I want. All I'm doing is really scoring them 
because they're still in between that dough and cracker texture. So I've had the crackers in about 10 more minutes and if I try to pick them up, they're just, <laughs> they're very hot. They're just gonna break apart and then I know they are done. If I touch them and they're feeling more like dough, I need to put them in for a couple, a few more minutes here and there. Um, but these are looking great. They're so good. It's been so long since I had homemade sourdough crackers. I'm so excited that I finally have my sourdough going so I can make more of these. They make the perfect addition for our family's charcuterie boards. Our kids just love to do that for a movie night. Just make a big board of little snacky things. And homemade crackers always make me feel better about what they're eating because if you look at the ingredients on back of the package of crackers it is just crazy it's a lot more than flour salt some seasoning and oil i can tell you that thanks for making sourdough with me and sourdough crackers hope you like this video if you did be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe down below